Welcome back to the final fall semester episode of G-Week. We're happy to see you back for another episode. This week, we'll catch you up on GW and impeachment, floods in Thurston, and new regulations on electric scooters, your favorite mode of transportation. We'll also talk about the best places to ice skate this winter in DC and dive deeper into new G-World options. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm Jessica Nix. And I'm Julia Albert. On Friday, November 15th, Thurston Hall was evacuated following a minor fire and flood on the dorm's third floor. GW opened the Marvin Center to all Thurston residents until the situation cleared later that night. Normal operations did not resume for almost a week. December 4th, GW law professor and legal expert Jonathan Turley was invited by Republicans to testify during the impeachment hearings. Overall, Turley's arguments were skeptical of the validity of the grounds of Trump's impeachment. Turley also testified in the 1998 during Bill Clinton's impeachment, where he argued in favor of Clinton's impeachment. This month, over 11,000 scientists declared that we are in the middle of a climate emergency. With climate change bringing greater challenges every year, reporter Madeline Taylor explores how the GW Office of Sustainability, as well as schools around the world, are working to reduce their carbon footprint and combat climate change. Earlier this month, a group of more than 11,000 scientists officially declared that our planet is facing a climate emergency. The report was published by Bioscience, a peer-reviewed scientific journal with scientists from over 150 different countries. They say the crisis is linked to excessive consumption and a wealthy lifestyle. This is shown by the recent spike in forest fires worldwide. In California alone, 94,000 acres have already been burned. Warm season days have increased by 2.5 degrees since the 1970s, according to Earth's Future, an environmental journal. Australia is also facing a bushfire crisis that has led to three fatalities and destroyed over 150 homes. On Sunday, Prime Minister Scott Morrison refused to answer questions of climate change. Italy's education minister said it's part of an effort to place the environment at the core of basic education. We spoke to Megan Chapel, the director of GW's Office of Sustainability, to discuss what we can do as DC college students to reduce our carbon footprint and aid in climate change education. In terms of what the meteorologists and the scientists do predict, is they're looking at you know more storms, more frequent storms, more severe rainfall. In Foggy Bottom, per se, the thing we'll probably feel the most are increased heat days, so extreme heat days, and also increased risk of extreme weather. We're in an urban setting, and so there's a lot of impermeable surface, which means rain doesn't soak into cement or into pavement. It soaks into things that are permeable. So things like green roofs and these other small pockets of gardens or parks that absorb water are a really good solution. So the university has made a commitment to become carbon neutral, and there are a handful of universities in the United States who have done this, so it's a pretty significant commitment to make. The university's date for neutrality, which means to eliminate or negate all of our greenhouse gas emissions, is 2040. Currently, GW sources 50% of these lights, and the power that's going into your camera is provided by a solar farm that we have built in North Carolina with a partner, Duke Energy Renewables. The other thing that we've done is make our buildings more energy efficient, and we're going to be doing more of that, really investing in our buildings, making them more energy efficient going forward. With climate change education from GW and Italian schools alike, progress is being made towards a more sustainable future. For G-Week, this is Madeline Taylor. Thanks, Madeline. Be sure to stay tuned after the break for more. Universities like George Washington play a critical role in hosting debate and discourse on events of the day. The right answer is not to refuse the other. The right answer is not to say, get rid of this religion. It's not part of us. It's wrong. I think that the story of America is a story of race. So when I think of the questions that I'm asking or the stories that I'm going to write, I'm thinking, OK, well, what are we learning about our country? Well, I think the likelihood of him being indicted is, is close to 100%. There was a lot of hurdles that had to be cleared in order for that to happen. One of the reasons that Donald Trump is president is because there is such a frustration with the way that Washington functions. And sympathy is one thing, but empathy is the language of recovery, and it's something that's without a doubt instilled into every person that's in recovery. It's never lead with the positive, it's always lead well, with the perceived negative. Well, I, that, is, that is part of the problem. I mean, I actually would agree with you on that. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that 
we have seen that is most under siege in this country is the notion of civil discourse, and we here at GW, among other things, very much want to stand for that. This is truly an only at GW moment. Welcome back. George Zimmerman, the man who shot and killed 17-year-old Trayvon Martin while volunteering for his neighborhood watch patrol, filed a lawsuit against Martin's family. Zimmerman's suit is for $100 million, which he says is for defamation and malicious prosecution. In early November, a video surfaced of a GW freshman making anti-Semitic remarks in Thurston Hall. Since the video leaked, various student organizations have spoken out about intolerance on campus. Here's Eva Grossman with the story. Unfortunately, this year, GW has experienced many forms of hate speech. In early November, there was an anti-Semitic incident on campus. Today, we had the opportunity to speak to some Jewish students and hear what they had to say. The incident involved a leaked Snapchat video of a GW student in Thurston Hall making anti-Semitic comments as a friend recorded her. The student, who has since admitted to being intoxicated in the video, has apologized for her words and reportedly taken steps to learn more about the Jewish faith. But Jewish students remain uneasy about the existence of anti-Semitism on campus. We spoke to students Lizzie Irwin and Sarah Shorenstein about their reaction to the video. The rallying call for us to come together and think about ways that like, we've all been personally affected by anti-Semitism, whether it be on GW's campus or like out of campus, but like it made us like come together to brainstorm ways that we can like work past this, but also as we can heal as a community. And to be completely honest with you, I was a little bit not surprised, um, but I do think I am glad that it ended there and it didn't go further and it didn't incite violence in any sort of way. Um, was I disappointed by it? Of course, but um, I'm just glad it ended there. For G Week, I'm Eva Grossman. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Eva. GW's Residence Hall Association is helping students de-stress during finals week by bringing midnight breakfast to the Smith Center on Wednesday, December 11th. The festivities will include free food, games, coffee, and more. Be sure to check it out and take a break this final season. The D.C. Department of Transportation is proposing changes to current regulations on the ubiquitous rentable scooters found around the city. Proposed plans include cutting the number of companies with scooter permits, adding parking corrals, and increasing the number of scooters. Reporter Pat McGuire has the story. Hi, my name is Patrick McGuire from G Week, reporting from Kogan Plaza on DC's newly proposed regulations regarding electric scooters. The District Department of Transportation has proposed changes to scooter regulations. They plan on cutting the number of companies with scooter permits from 8 to 4, allowing city officials to provide better oversight. Officials also plan on increasing the quantity of scooters from 5,000 to 10,000 and adding 100 parking corrals for dockless scooters and bikes. We talked to some GW students on their opinions regarding these new scooter regulations. I ride scooters uh, everywhere I go, whether it's going to the gym, to the library to study, back to my dorm, you know. I think they're great. I think they're a better alternative than, you know, paying the expense of Uber and Lyft. Uh, they're definitely quicker, you know, in some cases. So, I, you know, I really appreciate them being around. I think that DC, if DC regulated the number of brands of scooters, that would be good. But I think it's already hard enough to find a scooter when you're in need of one. Um, I actually have yet to ride them. I really want to try them out, but yeah, I haven't really tried them yet. Um, do you think DC is right in putting regulation down? Like, do you think there's too many? Um, I think so because, like, with safety, I think it might be a good thing, just like in case. But I don't really know because I haven't like had any many interactions with them. But yeah. Um, I think they're convenient, but I think at night, especially, they can be dangerous, especially on the mall because they only have a little light. Uh, I think they're kind of funny to see. Uh, but at the same time, I've definitely like tripped over them before, so they can be a nuisance. I think if there's no regulation at all, then DC should probably be doing something. For G Week, I'm Patrick McGuire. Joining us in the studio is DC News reporter Pat McGuire to give us an update on DC scooter regulations. Pat, could you tell us a little bit more about the updates? Yes, there have been some changes. The District Department of Transportation announced this past week that the reason for the drastic decrease in scooter companies permitted in D.C. is that many of these companies were seeking permits for devices that don't comply with city regulations. 
This left DC with four main operating scooter companies, Jump, Skip, Lyft, and Spin. The Department of Transportation plans on adding one more company to this list with the name of Hellbiz in the early months of 2020. DC will be the fourth city with Hellbiz bikes and scooters following New York, Milan, and Rome. They also announced that they plan on rethinking their original proposal of banning scooters usage during the late hours of the night due to the many complaints they received. The Department of Transportation will continue to consider bills that regulate scooter usage in DC during the new year. Oh, that was really interesting, Pat. I'm disappointed to see Lime leaving DC because I felt like that was the original scooter company. Everyone knew the green scooters, and it's sad to see them leave, for sure. That's true. I'm a bird fan all the way, so. Okay, I understand. That's fair. That's, yeah, I was always a Skip fan until I heard one that caught on fire last year. And so I it's heard just really that. shocking to me that they still got a contract because of that. Yeah, I, th I think so, too. I did a package about scooters in my sophomore year, and it's so funny to see how they've evolved because they were brand new at the time, and now it's just, mm -hmm. it's really funny. It's, uh, some, it's very interesting. Well, thank you so much, Pat, for joining us. It was a great package. Thank, thank you, you for having me. We'll be right back with more. All right, we'll be ready in about five minutes. I'll be ready. Well, these guys finish up, I got a few things I want to show you. Come with me. Over the summer, we gave a lot of things a new fresh coat of paint and a new look, including the Vern Shuttle Express. Take a look at this. Oh, there you are. I thought I'd lost you. Come on with me. I want to show you the new all-you-can-eat dining option out at the Mount Vernon campus. Hey, I can charge my phone in here. I'm stuffed. You got to try the mac and cheese. It's great. I got one more stop to make. I got to get my gear for the year. Let's go to the bookstore. You can't have too many GW ties. You need to get out in your buff and blue. I want to see at all the events and the games, raising GW High. One of the things I heard from a lot of our students is we need more community space, a place to eat, study, hang out with friends. Like this one, this is one of our new spaces. We need to get going, gotta get back. This is going to be an exciting year. And action. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. GW launched an innovation lab initiative, opening a new laboratory space in Corcoran Hall to all students, faculty, and staff. The goal of the new lab is to apply physics solutions to real world problems. Former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, came to campus on November 14th to talk about her new book, With All Due Respect. A group of GW students gathered outside of the event in a protest they called In All Disrespect. The event was organized by GW students against imperialists. Protesters made claims that Haley was an anti-labor politician, a war criminal, and an anti-union activist, and therefore should not be welcome on GW's campus. In an effort to add more affordable and diverse food options on campus, GW has partnered with the app 20 Tables to bring food trucks to Potomac Square. Our reporter Jessica Baskerville has the story. This is Jessica Baskerville reporting for G-Week. I'm here at Potomac Square, an old parking lot behind Potomac Hall that was renovated this semester into a community space. As part of the change, the university has partnered with, with 20 Tables to bring food trucks to Potomac Square. 20 Tables provides individuals and institutions consistent access to affordable food. We are an app that creates a marketplace populated with over 100 DC food trucks and vendors that offer students, working professionals, and other individuals access to consistently priced $6 lunches and dinners, and we donate a meal for every meal served. By integrating the dining program with 20 tables, we can provide you, your staff, your students, access to those meal deals and because of the mobility that our network provides, we should explore the idea of an on-campus food truck depot, and that's what Potomac Square became. This place solves many problems for us in our dining program. So we hear a lot of people say, well, the dining program works if you cook. I don't want to cook. Well, all right, come here. We're here daily. We're here for you. 
Students can use tickets to buy from all of the food trucks here in Potomac Square. In addition, students can use their G World to buy tickets on the 20 Tables app. For $33 of G World, students can buy five tickets. A lunch is one ticket and dinner is two tickets. 20 Tables brings a variety of different vendors that bring different types of food that typically haven't been accessible with G World. Among the food trucks, there are an abundance of first and second generation entrepreneurs and individuals who have started businesses with family recipes. Um, Indonesian, Korean, Nigerian. Uh, we had a group of students who came and visited one of our Nigerian trucks and remarked that they just enjoyed the different types of cuisine and that we were able to bring their type of food onto campus um, and it really made them feel at home. The 20 tables is like future. It's like uh, like magic. <laughs> Good idea. It's, it's a huge idea. The first thing, you can, a lot of people do order just from the phone, you know, just from the app. Easy for us, easy for them, and we save time also. Food trucks change every day and switch every day between lunch and dinner. Students can track the food truck times and locations using the 20 Tables app. For G Week, I'm Jessica Baskerville. Thanks, Jessica. Stay with us for more. This is the all-new GW Shuttle Bus for our Vern Express and VSTC Express, making the same stops on the same schedules, but with some major upgrades. Oh, look, here you are now. Look how happy you are. This is one of your drivers. Look how happy he is. Smile and wave at him. Learn your driver's name. What do all those buttons do? Everything. What does the most important button do? Wi-Fi. If you're on the shuttle, you're connected. You'll be tweeting about the smooth ride, snapping about our leather seats, and everything will be hashtag seatbelts, hashtag air conditioning, hashtag blessed. Every bus is full of USB charging stations. Every shuttle is equipped with a bike rack. We can get every GW student where they need to go, and you'll always find your ride now that we're decked out in a beautiful bumper-to-bumper -bumper buff and blue. Where can you hop on these wonderful new shuttles? You can pick up the Mount Vernon shuttle at Funger Hall or at the Red Cross building. Heading to VSTC, we'll pick you up at Funger and stop at four VSTC buildings before heading back to Foggy Bomb. So hop aboard our new shuttle buses, sleep easy, and dream about what really matters, that deli bagel. Welcome back. The D.C. City Council unanimously voted to recommend the removal of Foggy Bottom Councilman Jack Evans for ethics violations. Investigations found that Evans used his public office to benefit private clients and employers who paid him hundreds of thousands of dollars. Senator Kamala Harris dropped out of the Democratic primary race on December 3rd. After a heightened campaign over the summer, her campaign lost its momentum in the fall. She cited financial reasons for dropping out. As of now, 16 candidates remain in the race. D.C. has so much to offer during the holiday season, including amazing spots to ice skate. Filled with festive lights and sculptures, the National Gallery of Art Sculpture Garden is a great family-friendly place to visit this season. And this marks our last episode as your anchors. I will be graduating in May, but you can always catch Jessica on Colonial Crossfire. We're going to miss Julia so much here at G Week, and I've loved working with you s this semester. It's been so great. Thank you, Jessica. I'll miss G Week a lot, but I'll definitely be back to visit. As always, check us out on gw-tv.com and on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages. Be sure to check out our new anchors next semester, Devin Link and Simone McKenney. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a great semester. Good luck on your final exams, and be sure to tune back into G Week after winter break.